Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 71. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we're Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the 85 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, we do product reviews, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sort of sit down on a couch a and just talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is Two Crazy Ketos. That's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So, wow, episode 71. <laughs> this year is rolling right along. It is definitely rolling right along. Even though sometimes it feels like a day has 500 hours in it. But then a week feels like it's got four minutes in it. Yeah. So it's weird, right? What is it? The the years are, are short, but the but the days are long. <laughs> They're long. So if you are new to our channel, no. We are not sitting down on a couch. Uh, we I'm used to dead. sit down on a couch. Yeah. But after the COVID thing, we started live streaming. Then we moved out here on the bench. And we're just going to stay on the bench, but we're going to leave the name of the series on the couch. Because if you've been around for a while, you've got the inside joke. We never want to forget where we came from or that the most important thing was how this all got started, which yes. was sharing the message of keto with as many people as we possibly could because we want people to enjoy their lives, enjoy good health, and, and get better. That's absolutely Just true. get better. And I was amazed. We actually had a really fun video, a keto, like, let's talk about it yep. this week. And I was absolutely amazed by some of the responses that we got on Instagram. I was shocked on some of the YouTube comments of... There were a few people who've had some negative interactions, but the amount of people who have had no negative interactions, because yeah. when I got started, it was nothing but negative. From friends, family members, acquaintances, grocery store clerks, you name it. So maybe people are starting to open up a little bit. Well, it was amazing. I thought that it was a very, like, varied response on Instagram. People, some people had said I had to stop volunteering where I was volunteering my time because the aggravation was just so much. I was, I wasn't even enjoying my volunteer opportunities. Other people had said, yeah, I don't discuss it at all with anybody. Some people were like, you know what? I'm experiencing really good health and right. I'm going to be proud of what I'm doing. And then still others said, hey, I don't really talk about it, but I have a lot of people asking me more information. So, I mean, it was just all over the place. But what I love is no matter what your experience sort of out in the world is with other people who are, are non-keto, you can always count on somebody's got your back as far as within the keto space. Yeah. And I love that. I love personally, no matter what kind of day I've had, I can always count on people like in our Facebook family group that, that love me and are supportive of what I'm trying to do. Right. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I will leave a link for it over Rachel's head. It was a lot of fun to make. It was just something we started thinking about like, hey, you know, I know there are other people that go through what we went through, which is why we decided to make that video. I was a little bit worried that that we were too bold in what on our, in our reactions because I mean, it was Rachel and Joe unscripted. It's really, you know, how we think and right. the frustrations that we've had on the inside of us. Yeah. So uh, I did want to mention this week's Keto Chow flavor of the week. Mm -hmm. It is natural strawberry. So there is a link for that down below. If you use that link, you automatically get 10% off. We don't have a coupon code anymore. What is the difference between natural and regular strawberry? Because I forget. The natural strawberry is sweetened with monk fruit extract. Okay, okay. Whereas the other one is sweetened with silk rose. Some people wanted to try with monk fruit extract. So they do have that. It's the only flavor they have with monk fruit extract. Um, I personally prefer the regular strawberry. Me too. But some people do like the natural strawberry. And uh, it is a little bit more money because it's monk fruit. So. Yeah. Now, we have some exciting news before we start talking about this past week. I am so excited. I'm about to bust. I could hardly sleep last <laughs> night. <laughs> so last night, today is Sunday, we got a text message from Julie over at Redmond Real Salt. Hey, Redmond. And uh, she asked us 
if we would like to host their next community fast. So they what? they do what? Uh, a quarterly fast in their Facebook fasting group. And I'm gonna leave a link for that down below. So you go over, there's about 15,000 people in it. And quarterly, they do a group fast. And some of the hosts of the past have been Dr. Barry, and Dr. Boz, do you remember who else was there? And, and now the two crazy ketos? And two crazy ketos are, is gonna get to host the next are community gonna be fast. Bumping elbows with this prestigious group? Like what an honor, right? <laughs> so the fast is going to be on July 30th. We're gonna finish July with a splash. Yep, it's July 30th, and it's gonna start at seven o'clock. And what we're going to be doing is what during the fast, we're going to be over on the Redmond's Facebook fasting group going live a couple of times, probably the day before, and then a couple of times during the day of the fast. And here's the really good news. A lot of times their fasts are 48 or 72 hours. This is going to be a, a 24 hour fast. 24 hours. So if you have never done a fast before. Or if you're afraid of the longer fasts. This is the one to jump into. This is the one to jump into. 24 hours maybe for somebody. This is the push that they need. You're going to head into August feeling incredible and feeling really accomplished. If mm -hmm. you've never done a fast before and you're like, I love that my boss, my, my food is not the boss of me. Right. That's what I really ultimately get out of fast is like I feel good and the mental clarity is amazing but I always feel so accomplished as a human being when I'm able to get through one of these challenges so this is the one to try yeah now it is it's gonna run from 7 o'clock on the 30th to 7 o'clock on the 31st p.m. I do have to find out from Julie and we will let you guys know obviously on our live stream on Thursday and as well as next week um, I don't know if that's Eastern time, like our time, is it Utah time? I don't know oh. whose time zone we're using, but we will be going live over on the Facebook group for Redmond during that fast. Are you saying that the world may not revolve around this Eastern Standard Time? Because that is news to me. I just realized that we have to go live on the Redmond fasting group mm -hmm. at seven o'clock. Right. And it's on a Thursday. We'll just we'll and let we everybody know. And we live stream at eight thirty. So we're gonna do back to back live streams. I love Are it. you ready for that? I love it. Back to back, one way or the other, either them and then us, or, or us, us and then, then them, them. Right? One way or the other, we're gonna be doing a back to back live stream. So. Uh, hey. You know what? I'm loving it. I am so, so stinking excited. We're excited. And I love the fact that it's a 24 hour fast because I know a lot of you guys have said like, I just can't do the 48 hour. I can't do the 72 hour fast. I could do a 24 hour. Well, here's the one. We're going to do this as a community and we're going to do it with 15,000 people over on the Redmond group. Yeah. So make sure you get your Redmond salt, you know, get some salt, get the salt, uh, the we'll salt. The link down below. There's a link down below. We also have a coupon code. I believe that coupon code gets you 15% off. I don't remember if it's 10 or 15, but we do have a coupon code. It's two crazy ketos. She also said, so we've mentioned it before that we're going to have a Redmond bundle, which we've been really excited about. And we worked with them for a long time to put that bundle together, but one of the pieces of the bundle is one of our favorite products. Absolute favorite things. The seasoning salt. The seasoning salt. But it's been on back order. So mm -hmm. she said that's supposed to come in in the beginning of August. So sometime in the beginning of August, our bundle will be available with them. And basically what it is, it's our favorite products. Right. We put together a little package of what we would recommend that you guys use, what we use on a daily basis. The kind of salts, the little salt box, the... The, you know, the salt licks, that kind of stuff. That's the stuff that we use all of the time. So we're really excited about that. That'll be sometime in the beginning of August, right after the fast. Perfect timing. So make sure you go join their fa their uh, Facebook group. Again, the link will be down below and get all of your salts. Well, and it's great if you're somebody who's like, well, I'd love to do it, but there's nobody in my house doing it. I'm going to feel all alone. 15,000 people will make you feel not alone. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So speaking of fasting, we have been doing a little bit of a challenge, which we're gonna have a video coming out when we finish the challenge towards the end of this week. Right. And uh, I'm just happy to say, at least for me, okay, the scale is finally moving 
in the right direction. That is awesome. That excites me as your wife, not just because like you're super mega ultra hot <laughs> and I totally love you, but you know, when you're in a good mood, I'm in a good mood. It makes it better for everybody, you know, when you're feeling good and you're seeing that, you know, forward mo you know, movement in your plans. You've right. never not eaten keto right. through this entire process, but that almost exacerbates the frustration because you're like, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be right. doing and stuff's not happening. What about you? How, how is the scale treating you? The, tr the scale has treated me really, really well. I'm like, you know, I'm always a 10 pounds thing. Right. There's always, depending on the time of the month and how much, I can't stop doing the robot. <laughs> um, depending on how much sleep I get or how stressed out I am or, you know, all kinds of things factor into it, but it's usually around 10 pounds. It's right. 10 pounds up or 10 pounds down. Well, I was at my 10 pounds up, hovering toward 11 pounds up, and now I'm back down to five pounds up. So right. five pounds down, like what? how do you want to see the glass? Half full, half empty. It looks like it's emptying out, which is good. Have experienced a little bit of a whoosh this I told you, week. I, I kept telling Rachel's like, it's not working, and I'm like, give it a few days and you're going to have a whoosh about halfway through and, yeah. and you had it right i could set my watch by it now i actually we actually had started this and then what ended up happening was i got sick and i had an allergy attack and then i had two days because all of a sudden like life happened and we had a bunch of things well, thrown onto us and so i had two sick, days like the flu no 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 i got an allergy, allergy attack, attack but topped off with two days of no sleep because we were trying to catch up with work and everything else and so we decided to restart and it originally rachel wasn't joining me and then she joined me well you know what i like is it's it's our life Right. And if you want to challenge yourself, and let's say life gets in the way, blows a challenge, blows a health goal that you have, don't just totally abandon it. Get back in there. Right. It's okay that you restarted it again, right? Like right. The, the chessboard fell off the table. We don't have to stop playing. Like get back in there and let's start again. And I'm excited that we did. If we hadn't, I don't think we would be feeling as good as no. we do right now. Yeah, and we always say, yes, we say the scale is the devil. Because it is. And so I don't want anybody to be thinking like, oh, well, you always say the scale is the devil and you're complaining about the scale. It wasn't just the scale for me. It was, Clothing. I, I couldn't fit into 75% of my pants. Right. And you know, or I could, but it was one of those super uncomfortable. Did like, you have to have a running start? Jump on the bed while zipping up? Well, I never really tried that. That's a that's a. Girl I've seen thing. you try that. I've done that many times. Many <laughs> diving many times. board off the bed. And then you start to think. I don't know if if you. Well, I guess you probably have never done this, but I will do that. And then you have to think in your mind, where am I going? Is there another, like if I have to go to the bathroom, which I will, because girls, is there a bed I can jump on at the next location where I will be? Or something that I could jump and, and get the zipper back up again? Or is one, one time it's up, have I stretched my pants enough that after I go to the bathroom, I can get my pants back on? These are all things that I'm thinking. I've got to know, is this zipper going to be able to go back up later on? Have any of you guys ever experienced, if you have, if you've experienced this kind of thing, do us a favor, hit the like button. Let us know that you've experienced these kind of things. So for me, yeah, no, I don't do the bed jumping. I have a better solution. What? I resort to basketball shorts. Oh, I was going to say, did you porky pig it? That's well, for heat. close, but no, I resort to basketball. Places. Well, you call my basketball shorts. Ball shorts. Ball shorts. They're scary a little bit. <laughs> Feels a little bit like I'm too close to someone that I may or may not know. But, I, I get uncomfortable with them sometimes. But I have not worn shorts other than around the house like to sleep. Right. right? I have not worn shorts in two and a half years. Right. I, I was able to get into skinny jeans and I stayed in skinny jeans and I work in skinny jeans and I go everywhere in skinny jeans. Well, for the last four months, 
I've lived in basketball shorts. Well, with the exception of when Chris and Miriam came to visit us. You bought me two pairs of shorts. I bought you some shorts because you need some vacation clothes. It doesn't make sense. I don't sense. buy clothes, not when I'm up. It make doesn't make sense to like go on an airboat ride in a pair of jeans. It just doesn't. I mean, I guess you probably should because it's like a hot metal seat that you're on and you're gonna burn your butt and then right. also get a sunburn that's like weird. But I feel like you need the dad cargo shorts vacation uniform, right? right? Like that's how true. many of you guys out there, you, you got the dad outfit, right? You usually need, you got away with wearing a t-shirt. Usually the dad uniform for vacationing is like the button down Havana like shirt. Not me. That's usually what you're supposed to wear. Well, that's not me though. For the dads. <laughs> so anyway, Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that little bell button to be notified because that video will be coming out towards the end of this week or this weekend. Uh, we're really excited about it because we didn't know what the results were gonna be and we're only halfway through, but so far the results are really, really good and we're excited about it. And it's an all spaghetti diet. And <laughs> Just kidding. It's and <laughs> the reason I even bring it up Aside from the fact that we need to get you guys to make sure you hit the bell button so that you're notified when we come it out, okay. come out with it. But I bring it up because doing this challenge has opened up our diet food. Well, not our, our lifestyle foods, it's right? It's true. We've started experimenting with some extra foods, foods that we haven't eaten. Because if you've been watching our channel for any length of time, you know we pretty much eat eggs, hamburger, it's bacon yogurt and keto chow it's really, that's pretty much our diet and is, then the occasional brisket or something like i mean that. even when we go out to eat it's like chicken wings it's prime rib i feel like we're sort of super boring which is why we don't do a lot of like what i eat in a day videos because right. I, I feel like you guys would be like okay seen it been there done that once in a while we'll make a recipe and you know we have a bunch of recipes on our website and once in a while we'll make them but i would say once a month yeah. Right. But it's pretty much eggs, hamburgers, eggs on hamburgers. So for the last week, we've been eating different things, like different types of, we got some shaved steak, right? We yeah. found, oh my gosh, at Aldi's, and think about steak -um, Yes. Right? That's what it reminds you of, but it was fresh. Right, I was going to say, but much better. <laughs> it was fresh and it was very inexpensive. It was like $5 and it was very lean. Yeah. But it made like the best steak fajita taco bowl. Well, right? That's pretty much what I was going for. I was almost going for like a chipotle bowl mm -hmm. without the rice. I mean, we did like the steak with a little bit of green peppers and onions in it. Just enough. Delicious. With some cauliflower rice over a bed of lettuce with just a little bit of sour cream and salsa. And it was so, that is something we have not had before. I honestly thought of it more as like a fajita salad. Like if I went to a fancy bistro and they had all of these like really fancy artisanal salads, right. that's what I was picturing as I ate it. And I, I felt very fancy. Right. Very, very fancy for our date night. I should have not been wearing pajama pants when I ate it. I felt like that would have added to the ambiance. Once I was done, I was like, I should have lit a candle or something. Like this felt very fancy and upscale. Unfortunately, we ate so late, we forgot to take a picture of it. We did. So we're gonna have to make that again just to get the picture. But yes, I'm on board with that. Whatever gets me that again. Maybe we'll go get that and have that for dinner tonight. Let's do it. But yeah, so it, it's been great because we've been having some different foods and you guys are gonna get to see some of those different foods because one of the things we're doing in this video is showing what we're eating every single day for the week. And it's weird, you know, some of these challenges cause force you to be creative. Right. And I can get into a rut and sometimes I'm very protective of my ruts. It's mm -hmm. weird, right? Because I think what it is is you find what is your the food that fits into your meal plan and satiates you. At that perfect intersection, when you find that food that you're like, okay, well, I feel full on it, right. and it also meets my goals, now that's what I'm gonna eat for life. Maybe you're not like that, but I'm that person. Yeah. That that it's like, okay, so don't I don't wanna try anything new because I'm afraid that either it's not going to meet my meal goals. Or it's gonna reverse everything. Or it's gonna not satiate me. 
and then I'm going to be ticked off for the whole day. And right. I don't know why I don't get a little bit more, like, brave about that. Yeah, I'm good with things staying the same for a little while, but eventually I get bored. Whereas Rachel, obviously, years. she ate oatmeal every day for two years. That was her food. Like, yeah. I can't do that. Rachel can eat eggs every single day, and she's good. I need a little bit of I don't need a lot of variety, but I need a little bit of variety. But the variety's been eggs, hamburger, bacon, eggs, chicken wings, you know. Combination. The occasional brisket thrown in there when that's, the brisket's usually the day when I'm just tired of hamburger. I wonder if it's that life throws so many curveballs that you're like, I want my food to be the thing I can absolutely count on. Yep. I mean, it's an, it's an evolution, I think, from the family time. I know plenty of people that I went to school with and their parents where every night was a certain thing. It was like Monday was hamburger night. Tuesday right. was Sloppy Joe's. Right. Like Wednesday was lasagna. Like there was, it was, they had a night and they didn't do We have one of those Tuesdays right We're, now is wing day. Is wing day. Right. But, but other than that, and it's not every week. But I know people who their every, the whole week was planned. Right. Right. Did you grow up like that? I'm wondering. Let us know down in the comment if you if you grew up with that every day was a certain kind of food day. Yeah. Speaking of like life throwing curveballs, if you can't tell, we're in a great mood because <laughs> we've had so many curveballs thrown at us over the last couple of weeks. We got so behind at work. We were like not able to make the videos we wanted to make. We weren't able to do the extra stuff we wanted to do. We, you know, and we're caught up. The How chicken coop happen? is sort of done. That I think was a biggie. It definitely like impacted everything. But now that the chicken coop is done and all of the other stuff and we're kind of getting ahead, we're able to produce the content for this channel that we want. We're able to have some free time where like we've got a couple of date days planned and, and it's been good. But back to the chicken coop. Yeah. <laughs> the honeydew list on the chicken coop was extensive. I will say. It was. I came to Joe and I was like, I want this thing big. I want this thing breezy because it is very hot here in Florida. And I got chickens that have got like fur on their feet. They're and so furry. I do want to say... We're at phase one. Now, yes. if you're seeing this on Monday, tomorrow we have the vlog coming out of us building the chicken coop. It's a three day, what we eat vlog, making the chicken coop, but we don't finish the chicken coop in the vlog because we kept getting rain. But we have put up pictures of what the coop looks like. But this was phase, phase one. one. But we're already in phase two because my second goal was we need to have a system where the gutters on the chicken coop would collect water in these ridiculous rainstorms that we have and feed into a barrel that would be able to be like a constant, you know, waterer for the chickens and Tabitha to have an outdoor dish well, as well. The thing is, is though we weren't supposed to start phase two yet because I wanted to get really caught up and ahead, like have a week to two weeks worth of videos done. Yeah. But we've had some horrible rains. Torrential And the downpour. other day we had a rain and our nesting box, we realized, was pouring water in to the chickens yeah. so like it wasn't on the chickens it was in the nesting box but what was happening is, is the water was getting into the nesting box portion and then we have pine shavings and the water was slowly just because it the wet shavings were touching the dry and it coming kept coming it. through so it was halfway through so i had to tear apart yesterday the whole nesting box and redesign it which now we did but I'm the kind of person like, ooh, halfway through something. Like I was supposed to do that and like halfway through doing that, I'm like, oh, I want to do this. And so, yeah, I've built an automatic watering system for it. A gravity feeder system for food. I built, I, I made a custom chicken feeder system out of PVC pipe that holds like 40 pounds of food. So we won't have to go out there and like feed them every day and make sure they have food. Well, also they won't be on a system where, cause like all of the little feeders that you give them, they all want a stand on that feeder and then like, and poop right. on it yep. because they're like poop machines. And the way I designed this, 
they can't waste food because if you've got chickens, you'll know that they like to like grab the food and then kind of flick it backwards like and to... half of it ends up on the ground and they'll pick at that, but there's a lot of waste. Well, I designed this so they can't do that. They can get their head in there, but when they flick it back, it gets pushed back in and it's a self-feeding thing. But then we had the watering system, like Rachel mentioned, I found on offer up. Yes. 55 gallon tote drums for $10. If you're a Pinterest. So we bought three of them. I don't know why I bought three, but I bought three of them. Because we're going to make furniture with it or something. Because if you are a Pinterest fan, look up, what is it called again? Well, uh, 55 gallon drum things. It is amazing what you can yeah, do. Yeah, we found with those a picture things. of a guy who makes trains out of them. I mean, there somebody like made go karts, a, a boat. A boat. It was a picnic. A, no, it was a picnic table boat. Picnic table boat with a motor on it. Like right. we're not going to be working on that just yet. But I thought it was funny that um, you know some of the plans because we had no real plans for the chicken coop, but we had seen some YouTubers who had you know made yeah different I, did, things I didn't that have blueprints. Liked. I kind of did it as I was going. I knew kind of what I wanted, but every I didn't follow anybody's plans. Or but anything something like that. to consider when you're watching YouTube stuff is where do you live and where does the YouTuber live, right? Because some of the ones we were seeing were people who lived in deserts right? and it never rained and rain wasn't an issue and he could have probably the coop that was like 1.0 edition and he'd be fine for life because right. they don't get the rain we get. But one rain proved that like, okay, yeah, no, we have to be a had, little different Had here. to change things up. But what I was gonna say is, so I got this 55 gallon drum and I'm like, we have seven chickens. They're not gonna go through this much water. So I put an addition on it, which is gonna feed an automatic bowl for Tabitha. Yes. Because Tabitha likes to drink out of our pool. Yes, so she does, and I like her So we've been working on that. her not doing that. Even though we have a salt water system, so it's right. not, you know what I mean, it's not like she's drinking a bunch of chlorine because we do salt water pool. But um, still, Yeah. ew, stop that. Yeah, yeah so it's really cool. So yeah, the, the chickens will get rainwater, and I'm excited about that. And then the next edition, which is coming, we, because it is so hot here, we've got a fan in there. But I'm gonna mount. A, we're gonna. I'm gonna do a solar system. But that's the. That's not you the mean next a thing. Like with planets. A, a solar. I'm gonna put a solar um, panels up on top. Okay. That's gonna charge a deep cycle battery, and then we're gonna put a fan, like a, a, a gable fan, in to give them air inside of it. But that's not the next thing. The very next thing is a solar powered light because we discovered they that they need a night light. They need a light to get in there because there's always lights on on the outside and so they don't want to go inside at nighttime. So they we're going to put just, a light in there with a timer. They pile up on the, the door. stairs. And then I, and I mean it is a it's a seven car pile up. Right. That that's just blocking the whole doorway because they're like, no, it's dark in there. It's light still on the stairs. I know I want to go up there, but I also want light. And so I'm just going to sit right here. It was hilarious. So we put a night light in there, you know, as a temporary thing. And it was so cute. But to I see got a solar power light coming tomorrow. Being like, okay, now there's a night light. I'm going in there. Yeah. As soon as I turned the light on, they all ran in there. And the sweet Dyson fan so that there's no blades and they don't hurt their little beaks that, that dad put in there for them was the sweetest thing ever because he's such a tough guy when he comes to like, oh, if you guys don't lay eggs, then I'm going to like, you know, have to eat you and this is going to be KFC. He put a fan in there. <laughs> like he put a giant like $400 Dyson fan in there for the chickens. It's not staying. So How anyway, yeah. So we've got a bunch of additions. So make sure again, you're subscribed and you hit that bell notification because we've got a lot of videos about that coming out, including an automatic door opener that I'm putting in this week. Too. Yeah. So then we'll get to the solar panels with, you know, having like an electrified fence and all that kind Basically, of stuff. Basically, we're moving but to the point where they have a nicer house than us. Pretty much. I think is where, I think it, this is where that ends. I think we've talked about the chickens enough. Do you yeah. want to get to comments? Well, um, before we do, I just want to say we are continuing with our movement challenge for July. That's true. And I did get creative on getting my steps in. And I mean, you've got to be resilient because it's like, okay, I'm going to get 500 steps. It's going to pour down rain and I'm going to put my sneakers back on and go back out yet again. And if it takes me three times to go out, I'm going to do it for three times, but I'm getting my steps in. And one of the days it was super hot. I did not want to 
to step. Let me just tell you, I wanted to lay, I wanted to lay down in bed, but I, I knew if I told myself, Hey, if you get your butt up, Rachel, and go walk, you could walk down to the thrift store and buy yourself some new clothes. So I'm wearing my lovely, one of my well, $2, my $2 shirt, and I also have some $2 khaki shorts on that are brand spanking new, four bucks, and it was worth stepping for because I'm really excited. Look at my cute little It cute looks little nice. Neckline. I like that. Thank you. Let's get the comments. Yes. We don't have a subscriber of the week. Okay. Do us a favor, please, if you're new to our channel, I'm if sad. you've got a story. Make sure you either send us an email at stories at two crazy ketos or go join our Facebook family group and share your story because like we say, your story is going to inspire someone. There's somebody that's going through what you're going through or what you did go through and you're going to help somebody along in their journey. So please make sure you uh, share your stories. Please. Let's uh, turn on the thing so we can see the comments. Oh, I see Rachel and Joe. You see us? I see two crazy ketos. You know what? Let's take a quick commercial break before we start the comments after these messages we'll, <laughs> we'll be, be right, right back. back oh my gosh we're back <laughs> and my hair is still the same color how did that even happen i don't know you amazing she said she was going to come home with a blonde the other day i would have killed her i almost went blonde but that was one of those like quarantine decisions okay first comment is from renee hey renee and Renee said, I love the new format, but honestly, I love any time I can catch y'all. My schedule oh. varies sometimes, so if I catch a live during the day, awesome. But if not, I will still watch all of your videos as soon as I can. Thanks for always looking out for the fan. Thank you, guys. Renee, I love you. Oh, my gosh. She is just such an encourager. There, there you go. There is proof that if you're going through something, if you're on this keto lifestyle, maybe you don't have any support around you at work at home whatever she's in the facebook family group listen to this beautiful woman yep. like how amazing of an encourager she is so yep. kind now we do have so we have a bunch of comments or I, I just pulled a few but there were a lot of comments about switching keto on the couch from the live to back to tape thanks for your grace about it yeah and most people like the fact that we've gone back to taping. Okay. There were some people that said they weren't watching because they don't like lives anywhere. All right. And for the people who really wanted us to keep live, we're gonna do we're trying to throw in another live stream here and there. And then next week when we do the fast, you'll get a bunch of live streams. All you gotta do is yeah. go join us on Redmond's group. Oh, that's fun. You ready? So the next one is from Keto Bros. Keto Bros. I like the non-live keto on the couch episodes. Oh my gosh, are we dead? <laughs> we may be dead. This is not live. <laughs> Just kidding. I also like when you used to recap what you ate during the week. Thanks. We are absolutely going to get better about turning that camera on when we eat stuff. Sometimes we just forget to turn the camera on or it's super late or we're super tired and we're like, oh, I don't feel like filming it. But we are gonna start trying to recap our food more during Keto on the Couch now that it's back to being a taped thing. I can be a velociraptor when it comes to my food and just be like, as soon as the plate's handed to me, like you know, knock it down. It's funny, if I give a treat to the chickens on like a paper plate, cause I'll like maybe, you know, have something for, you know, vegetables or something on a paper plate or that their eggs, one will always jump up and swap that plate down, like put it down and let's get to eat. That's Rachel. And that's me. <laughs> so next up we have Anne. Hey Anne. Anne said, I'm so glad you are back to pre-recording Keto on the Couch. I felt so disconnected from you the past couple of months as I feel the lives just lose something. Okay. I love Keto on the Couch and I can fit it in my own schedule. This also feels just a tad bit more normal. Oh, good. I'm not sure what normal means, but this brings a bit of normalcy back into my life the, in these very abnormal times. Well, Anne, I love that. That's If, if there's no other reason to bring back Keto on the Couch, like pre-recorded, then that's the reason for me. Like, I love that. Mm -hmm. The next one is Luana Jackson hey, over Luana. on Facebook. And uh, she had a question. She said, can I use collagen in my coffee during a fast? So we did just recently put up a video on coffee. Coffee. And, uh, or specifically on bulletproof coffee or fat coffees. And we do talk about it in there. And yeah, for the most part, collagen, again, depending on what you're fasting for, yeah. will break a fast because collagen is protein. 
and consuming some protein is going to stop autophagy. Yeah. So for the most part, I would steer clear of collagen. If you haven't seen that copy video, I'll leave a link over Rachel's head for it. But for the most part, I would steer clear of collagen during your fast. If you really need something in there, throw a little bit of butter or some MCT oil or something like that in there. I like butter in my coffee. Okay. So we have Yvette. Hey, Yvette. Um, she says, I have been having such a hard time staying on plan. I know what to do. I just can't seem to do what I need to do. Scented but unscented for sheets due to allergies, and I need a coach. Do you guys do coaching? Okay, so um, first of all, we've got the laundry issue coming up. So I'm trying to ignore the we're laundry gonna, We're going to talk about that. I have a feeling more just people are going to Just keep doing what you're Joe. doing, that. Um, <laughs> just keep doing what you're doing. As far as coaching, right now we don't do any type of coaching. We've talked about that, but... Uh, we haven't really gone anywhere because we felt like we couldn't dedicate the time that it would take. We do have our Patreon and um, our the higher level of our Patreon, you can uh, get a monthly phone call so we can do it that way. If you, Also, our Patreons have a private email and they can like access us with a private email where we see that. Some of the times we try to answer all of our emails, but sometimes it takes us a week or two weeks because we do get a bunch of emails and we have five other jobs. Right. <laughs> Next up is Jen. Jen Orthman said, scented. So we're into the yes. laundry issue. Yes, Jen, I am so with you. Scented, scented for the win. So if you didn't see last week's Keto on the Couch, we are having a debate on scented versus unscented laundry detergent when you're adding something else, like fabric softener, which we don't use, we don't use or you're, but now you're buying some other smell good stuff. So now you've got three different it's, smells going. Well, it's it's oils. So the question is, if you are using fabric softener, dryer sheets, or in our case, dryer balls that have essential oils on them, does your like laundry detergent need to be scented? Because my opinion is. You're mixing a whole bunch of smells and now it doesn't smell good. Like pick one smell and go with it. And I think the smell is the one that's in the dryer because it's the last thing that touches your clothes. This is a heavy heated discussion yes. in our home. And I say discussing because we are dissing and cussing one another <laughs> doing during this. We are not. Okay, you ready? Yes. Okay. So Doll said, hey, doll. the laundry detergent scents have gotten overpowering. That is true. When you walk your dog in the neighborhood and all you can smell is laundry detergent scent in the air, it's horrible. Slightly scented doesn't bother me, but what, what the, the heck? heck? Yeah, I'm with you. Some There are some scents that are just like, wow, somebody just like totally knocked over a perfume mania and then just doused themselves with everything. However... We went grocery shopping this morning on my date with Caleb, with Caleb and Anthony. Mm -hmm. I had I had two guys, I had a double date this morning, and uh, we went to the grocery store, and there was a gentleman there whose bo went right through our mask, and then Caleb started gagging, and then I thought, oh my gosh, like what if he pukes inside of his mask? <laughs> then what are we gonna do? And it, it is kind of a thing. The mask sometimes. Yep. Like, have you burped in your mask yet? Have you had to deal I with have your not own had the breath? Of that yet. Oh my goodness. So like those ahas burp like the watermelon and lime one. You're like, whoa. Like you burp and then you're trapped in there with it. Let's see what else people say. Lori said, Hey, Lori. Scented laundry detergent is mandatory. Yes. I have skin issues, but I still use scented laundry detergent. I just use Caravel moisturizing cream, and that offsets the dry skin. I am right there with you. I'm going to power through the itchies if I have to. I don't know. It's the, To me, the mixing of the smells is getting a little bit too bad. I love the essential oils that you get from, from Whole Foods. Yeah. I really wish you would just stick with just those. The dryer balls. I, I need to just wash your laundry separate. And you have a bunch of dryer balls over there. There's brand new ones for you. Brand new balls for Rachel. Ready? Cindy Buchanan, hello, says, I don't like or use scented laundry soap or dryer sheets. I don't like my clothes to have another smell. Probably because Cindy smells way better than we do. But like w between the officiating, which is not a thing right now, but usually, and um, all of the outdoor running around from the three guys that I live with, 
me and the cats and Tabitha are like, we need some more sense in here. That's not Mio. I think there's a couple more on this issue. Shanta wrote. Hey, Shanta. I use dryer balls, so balls. when out of oils, I need scented detergent. Yeah. I use unscented when I put oils in the dryer. Do not like to mix a lot of scents. This is. Thank you. This is Joe's dream girl. Now scented detergents are great. I went back to chewing gum, but I only eat one piece when trying to keep my fast going. That's good. I find I drink hot drinks more when it's cold. Texas is too hot, so it's limited on hot drinks. Yeah, I definitely am normally a person who always has like a container, a thermos or something of coffee on, on hand. But it has been so hot getting in the car that if I want to bring a drink with me someplace, it's got to be a cold drink. Yeah. I can't do the hot drinks anymore. I mean, oh my gracious. It is short season. I am not like, I do have a lot of like wrinkly skin on my thighs. I don't know if you guys have lost, if you've lost a lot of weight in your thighs, the elasticity hasn't caught up with the weight loss quite yet. And so it's a little bit wrinkly, but I'm like, that's fine. I'm rolling it up and shoving it up inside shorts because I enjoy wearing shorts because it's very hot outside. Right. But when you sit down in your car, has your skin stuck to the seat? There's a couple times where I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out of the car again because I'm stuck. I've literally melted to the car. It's so hot. Tina wrote. Hey, Tina. Laundry soap should be unscented. Nope. The scents are awful to me. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> Just kidding. You're totally allowed to have your own opinion. Uh, Just Joe's not. Okay, so this was the last one. Okay. And I think this is the perfect compromise. All right. Caitlin said, hey, Caitlin. I buy unscented detergent. Okay. And then I add essential oils to the bottle. Oh. I do not like added fragrance. Thank you for another week. Okay, so this is brilliant. I'm telling you, that's the compromise. So you've added Stop a with smell, all the scent things. But it's your smell. Take the unscented. Mm -hmm. Take your stuff that you're getting from Whole Foods. Okay. Put a few drops of that. Not into the, put it into the laundry detergent. Basically make an unscented laundry detergent scented. How cute is that? And then everything smells the same. And I won't complain. No, I think you'll still find something to complain about. My gracious, let's, let's, <laughs> let's get real here. Okay, I think we have a few things from Facebook maybe. Oh, no, Gail wrote something. Okay, Gail says, I totally agree about enlightened ice cream. Only thing is, as far as the bars are concerned, portion control is out the window when the first one tastes so good you eat two of them. Oh my gosh, Gail, are you reading my mail? Like, I, I feel like she's me. I am so fascinated by the different camera angles as you were speaking. Maybe Joe can give a demo on how he edits. Don't your backs hurt after sitting on the bench for so long, especially on the weekly live chats? Well, thanks for thinking of us, Thank Gail. Thank you very much first for thinking of, of us. How I've, sweet. I've actually thought about like us doing like a studio house tour. It's just that we always have like 50 loads of laundry on the couch. and okay. Is that is that in all of the studios? Or we, all the fancy studios got a lot of laundry You know piles? what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to, we, we have found the perfect solution to keeping a house clean. Okay. Right? Well, we did. We found out when Chris and Miriam were here. All right. Have an unexpected guest tell you they're going to be there in 20 minutes. Man. It is amazing how fast you can get your house clean. Okay. So I want to know. And it happened to us once before, right? Pastor Absolutely. came over when I had thrown my back out. Yep. And you, you just got to know. Okay. So what is your strategy? You've got one hour. Let's say one hour, because 20 minutes is it can be daunting, but like one hour. You got one hour to get ready for someone coming in your house. What is your plan? I always am like, I, I get can, every kid. I get you get every kid, but if you but if you're by yourself, because I've had it happen and it's just me, I I hit vacuuming first and I start my my the stuff to wash my floors while I'm waiting for that stuff to to incorporate and the water to get into to my mop bucket. I'm doing the bathrooms, guest bathroom first, then I'm hitting the hard surfaces, get back to my mop bucket, and then start the and mop. And everything gets hidden in our room because nobody ever wants to go into the master bedroom, right? Well, I mean, it's it's rude, right? Like, I, I, it, I think it is. There's a but... comedian that jokes about, like, I don't want to, if you have a house tour, I don't want to see your bedroom because I don't want to be thinking about, like, oh, this is where you do that thing? <laughs> like, in here, right here, is this where you do that thing? And so, yeah, like, I never want to go in somebody else's, like bedroom. So the next time we have an unexpected guest and our house looks awesome, we'll do a house tour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, every every um every room but our room. Every room but our because room. Because everything is. We'll do a there. studio tour. Yeah. Okay. April wrote. Hey, April. I may have only lost three pounds this month, but I am down 5.25 inches. Wow. One inch from my waist, two and a half inches from my stomach, a half an inch from my bust. Wow. And a quarter of an inch from my left thigh and one inch from my right thigh. Okay, so two things. Number one, that is incredible, April. And I love this perspective. This is what we need when when we are reporting about like, what did the month look like? Mm -hmm. What success am I having? Measure, measure, measure. April is doing it right. Then you actually. Because the scale is the devil. You can, The scale is the devil. And you can actually see that you did have results. And that is an incredible amount of results. Right. But the funniest thing to me in April, I had the same exact thing happen. Sides of your body are changing at different velocities. Like, how is it? You've got two thighs. They're essentially the same, right? Like. Aren't they? So like, yeah, one, once my left thigh will lose a certain amount of inches, right thigh is different. How? How is it happening that like my upper arm will like gain muscle, but differently, but I'm right. doing the same right. workout. Like how is it changing one half of my body? So weird. Okay, next up. Lori wrote. Lori says, I have a question about the insulated blender bottles for those that have them. Can I put them in the refrigerator? I like to mix my keto chow the night before and wondered if it would be okay to use the insulated blender bottle and store it in the refrigerator. Well, Lori, we have learned the hard way that they work really, really well because we have put a warmish keto chow that we just cooked up into the refrigerator but then the next morning, it's still warmish because yeah. it's insulated. So she's talking about this. This, These are our insulated Two Crazy Ketos bottles. They do keep ice for like up to 24 hours. Yeah. Like They work really, really well. Um, there's a link for them down below that you can find them on our website. But yeah, if you're going to put something cold in here or if you want to get it cold, you're going to have to leave the top off, off when you put it in the refrigerator. Not, And I don't just mean like this. I mean, I would actually unscrew it because it'll just take a long time to cool down. It really will. What I will use sometimes do is we'll make all of ours ahead of time and you can either put them in a mason jar or we use the plastic blender bottles. Yeah. And then if Rachel Transfer is it. going to like say the church or if you're gonna be out on the road and you wanna keep it cold, transfer it into this. But once you transfer it into this. It's gonna stay cold. Take the residual bottle cause you've poured it out of a bottle and now right. it's got like keto chow along the sides of it. Pour your coffee into that. You gotta save the- Or swig a little the, bit of water with the it. The keto child drippings. Wendy wrote- Hey, Wendy. Uh, must get my at work eating under control. Some of it is bad habits. Some of it is too little sleep. I've been burning the candle at both ends, trying to keep all the balls in air. Balls. My brain is constantly telling me I'm hungry, even when I know I'm not, and way too often. I listen. So frustrating. Wendy, I totally know how you feel. I've definitely been there. I, I definitely think that as, you know, things are changing in weird, the workplace even feels like a weird place. And, right. and you don't feel completely settled anymore. So yeah, I'm nervous at work. I'm, I stress at work. When, even when I'm down at the church and I'm like, you know, have I gotten everything done that I need to get done? It was so long of not being there. And then when you're there, it's like, it feels, it, you're just trying to get your bearings. It's, right. it's challenging. Just don't stick with it. Don't be hard on yourself. Rita wrote. Hey, Rita. She says, if one has been on a chicken broth, coffee, electrolytes, and water fast for a week, can you go right back to normal eating? Or should one go easy at first since it has been a week? Um, well, two questions. I mean, are, what are you fasting for if you're doing just chicken broth? Um, I, we always tell people don't fast for weight loss. Like, in, like as far as like, don't go on an extended fast thinking like, oh, I need to lose weight, so I'm just not gonna eat for five days. Right. I don't think that's ever a good idea because I think it's like a binge and purge. Um, again, my opinion, but that's just what I think. Uh, but if you're fasting because you're trying to do a cleanse or you're trying to just reset yourself or you want to get some long-term autophagy, that's great. Uh, if you're just doing bone broth, which is going to be very little calories, depending on how much fat's in there, 
I would probably ease in with a light meal. If you're up, maybe do a bulletproof bone broth, mm -hmm. which we have a video on that. Yeah. I'll put a link for it over Rachel's head. Um, yeah, do like a bulletproof one where you add a little bit of MCTs, some butter, some turmeric, things like that into that. That'll help kind of reset your gut and then eat a regular meal about a half hour to an hour later. Yeah, you definitely want to lead with some fats and not lead with like the carbohydrates. Your carbs. Yeah, do yeah. not, don't break a fast with a bunch of carbs. That'll right. be just like devastating. Yeah. Stephanie. Stephanie says, I see a lot of people post big numbers from their ketone readings. My numbers are always between 0.3 and 1.5. Why aren't mine high? Can anyone else, exp I mean, anybody explain it please? By the way, I've been on keto for about two years. Uh, this is real simple. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I have the same issue. I mean, my ketone readings are usually between like a 0 0.3, 0 0.4, sometimes even a 0 0.2. Um, at the height of a fast, I'm like 1.5, maybe 2, sometimes 2.5. Your body is probably very good at using those ketones, so they're not wasted. Yeah. If you're not eating carbohydrates, your body is working off of ketones and fat. And that's the bottom line. The, the readings that you're getting when you take them, that's the ketones that are floating around in your, in your blood. So your body can get really good at, number one, utilizing ketones. And number two, it can get really good at producing just what it needs, like and going directly from fat to fuel. So that's a good thing. Also, if you're eating like a very low, a lower fat and you don't have a lot of fat to lose, that can affect them. Eating at a caloric surplus will give you lower like ketone readings because the bottom line is what ketosis is, it's a way for your body to deal with a starvation thing. So right. if that's why you can go into ketosis on a regular diet. You know, people I hate to tell people this, but you could you that's how I got Rachel to actually do keto the second time because she went for 30 days just having, what was it, they like, like insurers insure. or something like that as a, a fast for God. And I said, you're eating so low calories, you're already gonna be in ketosis because that's how your body deals with starvation. So when you lower your caloric intake, you're going to have higher ketones. But if you're eating at just what your body needs or at a caloric surplus, you're not gonna have as many ketones. It doesn't mean your body's not making ketones. Try to get away from this thing where people say, it's gotta be a 0.5 or you're not in ketosis. Cause right. that's simply not true. Well, and don't worry about like what the other people are posting. Cause chances are also, you know, they're posting what's going on during a fast, which isn't like something that you're gonna sustain for a life right. as always be fasting. So, you know, if they're posting it, and we do the same thing. A lot of times you won't see my ketone readings unless we're in a fast. And we don't even take them unless we're in a fast. You know, cause you're trying to see what's happening. Right. So yeah, don't worry about it. Well, that was the last comment, which means that's the end of this week's Keto on the Couch. This was fun. It was a good Keto on the Couch this week. Now, if you like videos like this, make sure you check out some of the other Keto on the Couches. I'm gonna leave a link for them right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you can see right down here. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button right down here. And don't forget to hit the little bell button, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. Bye.